YouTube how's it going? The Goat House is back with one of my favorite videos we do here at the Goat House. Fact or smoke a day before the NFL draft, taking a look at all the newest, the biggest rumors. And I'm going to decide, are they for real or are they not? Fact or smoke, we're going to have some fun with this one before we get started. We're going to be live tomorrow during the NFL draft, day one, right here on YouTube. Predictions when teams are on the clock interacting with the chat, and then we'll have our reactions to each pick. I'm sure there will be some surprises. Very unpredictable draft, so I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, 50K, that's our subscriber goal. Follow us on both of our channels, and then that Twitter is a must-follow. Any link you need is in the comments or the description of every single video. I'm going to do a final, the real final mock draft. We did a recent mock draft, called that one my final mock draft, but a real final mock draft with multiple rounds on the Twitter before the draft starts, so you're going to want to follow that. That's a must-follow over there, so go check it out. First rumor, the Redskins are open to dealing the second pick. Is it fact or is it smoke? Um, well, this doesn't say they will deal the second pick, so I'm going to say fact. If you're asking me will they deal the second pick, uh, my prediction would be no, but it, it, it's possible, and I think they're open to it. You know, they're fielding calls, they're uh, – you know, they're, they let a, a unnamed team kind of create a layout of a deal, and they kind of have that there, you know. Um, that's very interesting. So they didn't stop anybody like, no, we're taking Chase Young, we're sitting here. You know, they didn't do that. So they're open to it. What I think is they're looking to see if somebody trades the house, you know, just trades a boatload of picks, uh, and that would be something that they they can accept. So more than what uh, the value normally is, or what you, if the, if you consult the trade value chart, you know more much more than that. Uh, so I'm not predicting them to to make that trade, uh, but it's possible, and I do think they're somewhat open to making that deal. So uh, it's a fact, I think. And moving on to the next one, the Giants want to trade back, fact or smoke. Uh, I'm going to say fact again here for this one because uh, they're targeting a couple different offense linemen that they're okay with. You know, recently I'm starting to believe they could be in on Andrew Thomas. Um, you know, they may have to sit put and take him though. That's the only thing. Uh, but I, my point is, I think they're okay with them with uh, a few of them or maybe any of the four. So I think they'll be willing to move back and pick up an offense lineman and a wild card. You know, they could throw us all a curveball and go for one of those top receivers. That would be an absolute wild card, but something tells me that's something they would do there. But uh, they do want to trade back, so I do think that's a fact there. Uh, moving on to some Dolphins rumors, trading up for a tackle. Really, that should say uh, trading up to the third pick for a tackle. Uh, that is the recent rumor. We heard, we kind of knew, had a feeling, we're predicting they, this whole offseason that they would maybe be interested in trading up to three, the Lions pick, uh, to maybe take a quarterback. Just today, just very recently, it's come out that that is true. You know, we are all right. But what we are wrong about is that they want to go up and get a tackle. So that's the rumor. That's the latest. That's what they're putting out there is is that fact or smoke. Uh, let's bring Smoke and Jay up here. I think that's I think that's a load of smoke. I think it's a load of smoke. You know, I think uh, they wouldn't just announce that to the world. You know, they wouldn't announce it to these teams. I still think they're in on Tua um, or Herbert perhaps, but – uh, you know, in the whole Laramie Tunsil thing, they kind of trade him away and then kind of revalue it big time. You know, they're going to trade up to three, trade up two spots, the third overall pick to take a tackle. I, I you know, I'm, I'm just not feeling that one. I'm not feeling it. I think it's, I think it's a load of smoke. Uh, and they like Herbert over Tua. We've heard that the last week or two. You know, maybe they're a little scared of Tua's injuries, uh, and they prefer Herbert over Tua because of that. Uh, they, they could be a little concerned about the injuries from Tua. That doesn't mean they like Herbert over Tua, though. I'm going to say Smoke. We're bringing Smoke and Jay back. Um, we should have got Smoke and Jay with the, in the Dolphins, with the Dolphins jersey for this one. But uh, bringing them back here, I, I think that's Smoke. I think they prefer Tua over Herbert. I'm not saying they're for sure taking Tua. They may be concerned about the injuries. That doesn't mean they just automatically really like Herbert or Herbert over, over Tua, for that matter. So uh, moving on here, talk about the Chargers. Do they like Herbert over Tua? That's kind of the, the rumor that uh, – 
couple of these teams, like the Chargers, prefer Justin Herbert over to a tongue of Iloa. And I'm going to actually say that's fact. I think they view Herbert as more of a fit to their offense. And, and on top of that, uh, they're a little concerned over to his injury. So this one I am buying. It just got the feeling from this offseason that the Dolphins were more in on Tua. The Chargers, if in on a quarterback, are more in on Herbert for the future of their franchise there. So I'm going to say fact. Uh, next one, uh, set on Tyrod. We hear Anthony Lynn talking about they like where Tyrod's at. They like that he's their quarterback, and they feel pretty good about it. Um, you know, So they may just go best player available, uh, perhaps. So pass on a QB. So set on Tyrod, cause, so they're going to pass on a QB. Is that fact or is that smoke? We're bringing Jay back up there. Get him back up there. They're, they're not all in on Tyrod Taylor. They had him last year with Philip Rivers struggling, and they kind of knew that they were going to move on from, uh, you know, Philip Rivers. I, I think they got that sense, and they continue to play. They continue to play Rivers, and then they could have an opportunity to win more games, maybe have a better season. You know, if they made a change, and they just did not want to do that. So there wasn't a lot of trust then. Why all of a sudden the week of the draft is their trust? Not even last week. Not even a month ago. Not even two months ago. The week of the draft, there's, uh, they're feeling very comfortable with Tyrod Taylor. They're going to take best player available, you know, and they still very well could take best player available, but I just think that's a load of smoke right there. I think it's a load of BS, so I'm going to say smoke there. Uh, the Falcons want to trade into the top five. This is a good one, and a lot of you suggested a lot of these on Twitter, so I appreciate everyone that uh, kind of helped me get through this here. Um, you know, for this great video that I really enjoy doing every single year. So I appreciate anybody who submitted their uh, their options here for the rumors. There are rumors they wanted to see if I have fact or smoke for. But this is a good one uh, because if it were to say top 10, they want to trade into the top 10, I'm saying fact all day. Do they want to trade into the top five, though? Uh, and I'm still going to say fact. I don't know if it gets done. A lot has to happen. A team has to be willing to trade back. they got to beat out, kind of win the bidding war to get up there. So maybe it doesn't happen, but I think they want to. You know, I think they want Jeff Fakuda. Um, you know, they could be interested in a guy like uh, C.J. Henderson as well. But to me, there is a difference. You know, some teams apparently have Henderson higher than Akuda. Uh, but, you know, that the only reason with that would be what I can understand people saying Henderson has more upside. I can understand that. I can get behind that, perhaps. Uh, but, uh, you know, the Falcons are – I think they're in win-now mode still. You know, they got to retool this defense real quick because this offense is win-now. How much longer does Matt Ryan have, you know? Uh, it already, Even though he still could play at a high level, it already feels like he's not at that level he was maybe two years ago or three years ago. So uh, they're trying to win now. Um, you know, so could they – you know, th my point is they, they like Akuda. That's, I think that, that's the guy they want. Wouldn't rule out Isaiah Simmons either to play next to Deion Jones. So I think they would like to trade in the top five, um, but I, I just don't uh, – I, I just – I don't know if it gets done, though. You know, but I, I do think they want to trade in the top five. That's what I'm getting to there. Uh, next, we got the Browns. They want to trade back. We've been hearing that like crazy. And I'm going to say fact. I think, uh, you know, they – in their plan, all these teams run through a bunch of mock drafts amongst themselves, kind of predicting where other – what other teams will do to kind of get an idea. And I think through their scenarios – uh, there's there's a run on tackles like we all expect pretty early in the Browns pick at 10. That's pretty early. Um, but the guys that they like, which are probably two of the top four that they really like, uh, they're projecting to be gone and they don't really want to trade away picks to go up and get them. So they're kind of feeling uh, that those guys, you know, we'll say Andrew Thomas and Mekhi Becton, I think is who they will favor. Uh, but they're kind of thinking those two will be gone or the two, whatever two – or three that they really like. Um, so that means a trade back, get some picks, and then we'll get a guy that we kind of value a little later. So I'm I'm buying that. But uh, I don't, I'm not saying they're for sure going to trade back, though, because what if one of those guys is there? Then they're going to take him. That's a, it's a can't-miss guy if they stay put and take that guy. Um, but then the question is, for Ezra Cleveland, do they want to trade back for Ezra Cleveland? It's a tough one. Uh, but I'm going to say smoke here. You know, they, they're just kind of making it known. Everybody kind of knows this. They want to trade back for Ezra Cleveland. It, it's... You know, it is the Browns. I know they have a different front office, but if they, you know, taking Ezra Cleveland in the first round is kind of one thing. It's nothing too terrible, but then kind of letting the world know that that's your plan, that's kind of another level of uh, terrible, I guess. Uh, so it is the Browns, again, but it's a different front office there, so we'll see. But I'm just not buying it. It's like too clear. You know, when stuff is too clear, 
it's really there's it's really smoke, which sounds ridiculous, but that's just how it is. Um, but you know, a couple of years ago, again, different front office, but the Browns the day of the draft that you know it was out that they're taking they're taking Baker Mayfield, and I wasn't buying it. I'm like, why is that just coming out now? We didn't hear anything about that end up happening. That is the first pick, so a little different. Um, but I'm not really buying that. They're making that too obvious, you know. So I'm just not seeing it. Uh, next, the Jets they want an offensive lineman over a receiver. Not that they would reach for an offensive lineman over receiver, but they prefer, uh, you know, one of their top offensive line targets over one of their top receiver targets uh, there at pick 11. And I think that's fact. I think their first priority is to build that offensive line. You know, that's what they want to do. They want to keep Darnold protected because that guy is their franchise. That guy is their future. And they feel they can get a, a just as good of a receiver later. They can't get just a good, as good of an offensive lineman a little later. So I do believe that. Will one be there? We talked about the offensive tackle run. Um, so maybe one isn't there. Maybe they have to trade up. I haven't heard anything about them trading up. But I do think they prefer an offensive lineman over a receiver. Uh, the Raiders will wait to take a receiver. What I mean by that, we see people talking, you know, and Mayock kind of brought it up like they, they know they need a receiver, but they're not going to reach for one just because it's the biggest need. You know, so they have two first-round picks. Do they take best player available, which is not a receiver with their first pick, and then with their second first-round pick, then take a receiver? It's a possibility. I'm going to say smoke because I think the best player available at their pick will be a receiver, and if it's not, it's that next receiver, and it might even be the next receiver. They may have the first choice, and there's a group of receivers right there that are well worth the pick and arguably the best overall player on, you know, available at that time. So I'm going to say smoke. Uh, I'm not going to say 100% they take a receiver with that first pick. Can't say that because we don't know how the board will end up with trades, with uh, surprise picks. But they, I think what, what Mayock's putting out there is a little bit of smoke there. You know, I think they plan on a receiver worthy of the pick being there. So I think that's kind of the plan there. Uh, next, we got the Eagles. They want to trade up for a receiver. And right away, I, I think that's a fact. I think they look at I think they're pretty in on C.D. Lamb and Henry Ruggs, uh, both of those. I think they really like both of those guys. Not that they dislike Judy. I think those are the top two that they really like. They could be in on Judy too. Uh, but they view there, – there's there's tiers from this receiver class. Very, there, it's a very good class all the way through. It's a lead at the top. You can get guys late first. You can get guys in day two that are that can make an impact. You can even get guys day three. So it's deep at the same time. But there's a pretty big difference between those top tier guys, the next level, and the next level. There's pretty big gaps. Uh, so the Eagles just want to go all in. They want to make this offense. They want to make Carson Wentz as good as it could be. So uh, I'm I'm in on that. That that they want to trade up for a receiver. Kind of trying to. In my recent mock draft, I went through this. Uh, kind of. You know, trying to identify where they could trade up, and you know they're going to be making the calls all around there. Maybe the Browns. The Browns is their best shot, probably at pick ten. That is their best shot, and maybe their only shot, unless they want to trade up too high. You don't want to go too high. You're taking a receiver maybe too early. Then you're giving up too much. The Browns is kind of that cutoff to the earliest they want to trade up to, and the best chance too, because you look at the Jets. A team like the Jets. I don't think they want to trade down. You know, other teams that are picking that area. Uh, you know, do the Raiders really have need to trade down? Don't think so. Um, you know, so we're in, and all of a sudden those receivers are starting to come off the board. So now you're too late. So it's a very, very small window to where to trade up to. They're going to be talking to the Browns. I, I, I guarantee that. Will they get a deal done? That's the question. It's going to be tough to get done uh, because they kind of got one spot, one chance, in my opinion. So we'll see if it actually happens. Um, right now I'm going to say it doesn't happen, but they want to. I'd say they definitely want to. Uh, Ruggs will be the first receiver drafted. It's a very tough one because it can go, you know, there's a group of people that think it's going to be Ruggs first, uh, some that think CeeDee Lamb, some that think Judy. You know, we even heard a scout say Denzel Mims is his number one receiver in the class. I don't think Mims is going first, but we, we've heard it. Um, but... So this one's tough, and it really depends on who's taking a receiver first. That's why that's what makes this one so tough is because who will be selecting a receiver first? Will it be the Jets, the Raiders? Will somebody trade up above both those teams, take a receiver? Um, you know, it, it really could be several teams. Uh, but most of this offseason, I would have told you, Smoke, uh, just starting today, uh, I'm, I'm feeling fact here. I think Ruggs will be the first receiver drafted. I think 
teams view him as the safest receiver. I think most of those teams that are kind of picking in that range uh, will have him number one on their board uh, because he's a, he's a guy that he's you know more of the speed outside receiver, but you're going to do a lot more than that with him. You know, C.D. Lamb, uh, not too much of a risk at all, but didn't play the better corners in the Big 12, and they, they gave him a lot of cushion. Very, very rarely saw press, and teams take that seriously. And then Jerry Judy, uh, we'll talk about him in a second here. But, uh, yeah, I think Ruggs, I, I'm starting to think he can't. It really depends on who's picking. You know, it really depends on who's picking um, the first receiver, but I, I think it'll be Ruggs at this point. Uh, so Jerry Judy, there's rumors about his knee injury from a couple years ago. That will cause him to slide. Some teams kind of flagged it. Apparently two teams did. Um, is that fact or smoke that he will slide because of it? I'm going to say smoke. I think the latest he goes is to the Broncos, uh, 15th overall. And some people may consider that a little bit of a slide because some people may have him around that yeah, 11, 12, 13 range. And 15 is the latest he'll go. And why I think he can go there is not because of the knee, though. Um, so that's what makes this smoke. Um, I, I think it's just because the run on tackles, uh, just how just how the draft every year kind of just – you know, shapes because of what the surprising moves or trades, the run on tackles, like I said, uh, and then he could be the third receiver off the board. So that can things like those, like just the just the draft by default will push him down to 15, which isn't really a slide, um, not because of his knee. You know, I you know if you it's funny because if you somebody were to ask you like who do you think has the most healthy you know has the healthiest knees just based on the way they play you know the first guy I think of is Jerry Judy just the way he plays so that was kind of funny but uh, it's something that I guess the you know that team should be at some point concerned about but um, you know for the most part I believe he's checking out I think it's some smoke um, to get teams scared really um, so I, yeah I definitely say that smoke uh, next we got it's pretty much the same situation you know where in the knees uh, will cause Javon Kinlaw to slide a little bit here. Um, and for this one, I'm going to say, I'm actually going to say fact. I don't think it's a big time slide like we're used to seeing, you know, with some big time players. I, he still goes in the first round. Uh, I just, I just think he slides a little bit, you know, the middle, I don't want to say late, mainly the middle of, of the first round, uh, because some teams are concerned yeah, about the wear mainly, um, you know, that will occur early on. You know, some people think arthritis, um, you know, he may you know, develop that early on, which which really isn't good, especially Kinlaw being kind of an upside project, uh, prospect, I should say. Um, he will be good right away, uh, but upside prospect, uh, that kind of hurts a little bit, hurts the stock a little bit. So I, I think he can slide a little bit, just too good of a talent with not a major concern to actually really fall. You know, it's not going to be a fall. It's going to be a little slide, uh, but I'd say fact. And then we got C.J. Henderson. We the first cornerback drafted. About 40% or so of the league has C.J. Henderson uh, above Akuda in their corner rankings. That, what I just said, I'll, I'll say fact, but what the question is here, Henderson, first cornerback drafted, I'm going to say smoke. Uh, I, I, think Akuda, I still think Akuda is the first corner drafted. I think it could go third. I think somebody can trade up to that four spot and take him. I think the Lions can trade back to five and still get him. Uh, don't think it gets by seven. I don't see C.J. Henderson, uh, you know, getting above that spot. So I would say smoke there. But so I won't say 0% chance from what we've been hearing. Uh, and then we got A.J. Trelby, the third cornerback drafted. And based on what I'm hearing and what I trust, I'm going to say that's a fact. I'm not really a, totally against him being the third cornerback drafted. But I wouldn't really agree with it. You know, I just got better corners. But um, I could see it. You know, the length and athleticism is re really stands out. And he's had really good play. You know, he struggled in the national championship game, but has really good tape. So uh, I think it's, and I think he could fit, you know, the, he can fit uh, uh, more of a man scheme and more of a zone scheme. Like he could fit either one. He'll play just fine either. Uh, you know, I'd prefer him in a zone-heavy scheme. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm starting to believe that that's true, that he'll be the third cornerback drafted after Akuda and Henderson. Uh, Pittman top 15 great so apparently there's a team out there unnamed team one team that has Pittman with a top 15 overall grade so top 15 on their big board um, was surprised to see that one and it's it's weird because is that something somebody would just make up you know an unnamed team would make up um, I just it's just very hard for me to believe it's just very hard for me to believe because uh, I I don't know if I have a team that I don't I don't think I see a team with a first round grade on them. We're talking 15, so I don't know why somebody would create that smoke, but I'm just not seeing it. Pittman's a heck of a player, 
great hands, one of the best in the class, very good contested catcher. He's a good receiver is what I'm getting at. I'm just not seeing anything anywhere near 15. You know, there's, there's quite a few receivers that have more to their game, more of impact players, more excitement to their game, more firepower than, in my opinion, the Pittman. So I'm just not seeing – I wouldn't see a first-round grade from a team, uh, but I wouldn't rule that out after seeing this. I just don't see the 15 grade. It's going to be absolutely wild if this is true and that if and that team picks around that range, then they're going to take them, you know. So we're going to be sitting there. I think it, I think it's very, very unlikely – we're going to be sitting there, and if this team is picking in that middle to late first round range, they're going to take them, and we're going to see that come up, and we're all going to be shocked. So uh, we'll see. Definitely an interesting one. Uh, Hertz will be a top 50 pick. I see people throwing out there people's final mocks too, putting them in the first round actually. Um, but I'm going to be more realistic here. Top 50 pick. Some people think he'll be easily a second round pick that's within the middle of the second round. Um, will he be that? Is that fact or smoke? And people are kind of buying into this too, but I'm I'm gonna say I'm gonna say smoke. Nothing tells me nothing from his play tells me he should be picked that early or will be picked that early. He's got some upside. Um, yeah, you you can get pretty unique. You can make a pretty crazy offense with this with this guy. That's where the league's heading. So you want to try to do that. You know, almost like a you know I guess what the Ravens are doing, Lamar Jackson, just having some speed out there, a quarterback, but mainly just throwing teams off because defense coordinators I guess don't. You know, don't have the experience against this. You know, still a lot of old school defense coordinators in the NFL. Um, so I can understand people's thinking. It's just the you know the talent level is not there yet. You know, the, he he's he's he if he plays early on, there's going to be a lot of turnovers. I think. And you know, you look you go back to the playoff game, watch the tape on that several times, and there was some big opportunities missed just by. I mean, his throws he's missing aren't aren't way way off, but consistently kind of missed these throws, kind of let Ceedee Lamb down quite a few times. Just big moments like that, and just just the play together just really isn't there yet. So I think that's a reach. I, I just don't think he's a top 50 pick or will will be at all. Uh, then we got the Patriots targeting a quarterback in the first round. Is it fact or smoked? Smoke, I'm going to say fact. Um, will it take a quarterback in the first round? That's, that's very, very tough to predict there. But uh, are they targeting one? I think yes. Um, there is no reason for them to target anything under a first-round pick quarterback because they have those guys already. You know, they got Stidham, they got Hoyer. And I, I like Stidham. I was a little higher on him than most people last year. Uh, but you can't be afraid to get better, especially at the most important position in football. Um, so if they were to target a quarterback, it would absolutely have to be in round one, unless somebody's sliding. Uh, but I think there's somebody on their mind, somebody on their board. Do I think they're going to go all, all out for this quarterback? They're going to trade the house for him? Uh, they're gonna. Is he a must-have guy? I don't really think that. Uh, but I do think they have, towards the top of their board there, maybe at the very top, a quarterback. You know, for when they pick there in the first round, maybe a slight trade up if they need to. Um, so that's an interesting something. Something definitely to look out for here, on day one. Uh, and then the Niners and the Vikings. Weird. Both these teams who have two. They both have two first-round picks. I've heard that both teams. Could be interested in moving both of their picks, both of them. Um, so that is pretty wild, if true. But I'm gonna I'm gonna say smoke on that one. I think it's very likely we see both of these teams trade once. I just don't see I don't see either one trading twice. Um, you know, the Vikings are they pretty much can't help themselves from trading. So I I guess it's possible. I, I just don't see them moving. Tw- Twice, but I, I've seen that 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 team, these teams, you know, the the Niners, if uh, you know, if the receiver they like isn't there at 13, they move back a little bit, you know, because the Kinlaw injury popping up too. Maybe they move back a little bit with that one, and they want to, but they don't want to move too far back with that. And then with 31, uh, they kind of want to gain more picks. Uh, they want to go back to early second, gain more picks uh, throughout the middle rounds. Uh, so that, yeah, I guess if you throw that scenario out there, it's possible. And the Vikings, um. You know, they like to trade back. I think they can trade back with 22. I just don't see them moving with 25. Um, so that would be pretty wild, though. Two teams that have two picks, uh, both could be on the move with both picks. So pretty wild there. Um, but that's going to do it for the uh, the factor smoke. Let me know your guys' thoughts. If you disagree with me on any of these, any more you want to talk about, best way to reach me is on Twitter, though. If we want to talk NFL, NFL draft, uh, that's a must-follow there. Please subscribe to both of our channels. We really appreciate it. We're going to be live April 23rd, tomorrow night during the draft. We're going to start 
30 minutes before the draft. Talk NFL draft and during it, predictions, reactions. It's going to be a lot of fun. Hopefully you can join us for that. That's going to do it for this one, though. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.